Hare Krishna. So I'm grateful to be here with all of you today. So we'll be discussing on the occasion of the Radhashtami about how the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition has brought the glory of Radharani to the world. That's what we'll be discussing. Now, if we consider Radharani is not mentioned explicitly in the main scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita or even in the Bhagavatam. Mm-hmm. Now, the Bhakti tradition has various important scriptures and of course, Ramayana and Mahabharata are important books, but they have got nothing directly to do with Radharani. Now, that doesn't mean, she, uh, now, Bhagavatam, there is an indirect reference, you know, very Anya Radito. So, it described that Krishna goes away with one special gopi, but her name is not mentioned. Now, this does not mean that Radharani is not mentioned. There are many, many scriptures in which she is mentioned. So, Brahma Puran, Brahma Vaivarta Puran, Brahmanda Puran are three of the Puranas which quite profusely describe Radharani. But the important point is, we may say, why is she not mentioned in the Bhagavad Puran? Now, or why is she not mentioned in the direct, direct Bhakti text so much? So, or the Dharmic text at large. So, why is she hidden? So, it's important to understand that way, if you go to the Vedas, even Krishna is in, hidden in the Vedas. In the Vedas, Vishnu is mentioned, but Krishna is not mentioned so much. Why? Because Krishna is God at home, not God in office. So, in the, the Vedas are primarily concerned with the material management of the world, and Krishna is not involved in the material management. In one sense, Krishna has subcontracted the creation of the world to Brahma. And if at all any management is involved, it's Vishnu who does that. So even Krishna is hidden in the Vedic scriptures per se. Now, if we consider Radharani, Radharani is Krishna's consort, but she is in Parakiras. Now, what is this Parakiras? Parakiras means that she is not, so Ras is emotion or relationship, which leads to emotion. And Swakya is where Krishna, where the pers- Krishna is said duly wedded with his consort. So Rukmini is in Swakiras. And Radharani is in the Parakiras. So now, even understanding God at home is not easy for people. Because a the person, they want to see God, they are habituated to seeing God in a position of authority. In Brahmaji couldn't understand when Krishna was playing and taking the juta of the cowherd boys, the buttermilk that they had drunk. Said, is this, how can this be God? So if they hear about Radharani, how can they understand? So that is kept hidden in the scriptures. Now, what exactly is Parkiras? So Parkiras, it epitomizes the ultimately selfless love, supremely selfless. So normally, when you talk about selfless love, it means that I give you something and I don't expect any, much in return. Now, we all want love to be selfless. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, there is we don't get anything in return, but we don't expect it. We don't demand it. So, why is Radharani's love this Parkira's uh, ultimately selfless love? Because she gives herself completely to Krishna and she gets nothing in return. She doesn't even get the honor of his name, that she is his wife. So, normally, in any interaction, see, if we consider the Karmakandi form of worship, people give very little to God and they expect a lot in return. Many people give in charity because they think that if you give in charity, we'll get 10 times more in return or 100 times more in return. So we give a little and we expect a lot. And that is the normal mode of approaching uh, approaching and even approaching God. That is the Karmakandi way. And Radharani, her relationship with Krishna is completely opposite. She gives herself completely to Krishna and she doesn't even have an official formal relationship with him. Now, the world may think this is immoral, but actually it is transmoral. It is transcendental morality. So if this is morality, immoral is below morality. Transmoral is above morality. So Radharani, in one way, is demonstrating the Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharma An Parityajya Mamekam Sharanam Raja. So when Krishna plays his flute, at that time, all the gopis give up all their dharmas and just rush to please Krishna, to surrender to Krishna. So that is Radharani's supreme position. Now, prema is far above dharma. 
and for the world to come up to dharma itself is difficult that's why krishna has to come again and again sambhavami yuge yuge to establish dharma in the world so the world needs to understand and follow dharma before it can get even a sense of prema that's why what happens is the scriptures focus much more on dharma than on prema so that's what the main scriptures talk about but now if you look at today's bhakti culture radha is always depicted with krishna in the center of ras lila and even if we have general depiction of krishna lila especially with the gopis in most iconography iconography is pictures she always has a special or distinctive position and if you consider the temples today radha krishna temples are often as frequent as if not more frequent than rukmini krishna temples so rukmini is krishna's we could say officially wedded wife his consort radha rani is not but radha krishna temples are far more so how does this happen if we look at the mahabharat it talks about krishna with rukmini primarily not with radha and the mahabharat is also an influential book so this this has happened the centrality of radha's position to a large part that has happened by the bhakti tradition at large but specifically by the gaudiya tradition so what exactly is the understanding of radharani's position in the gaudiya vishnu tradition so before the gaudiya vishnu tradition there was jaydev goswami who wrote his geet govind and while the see not all puranas were equally widely read there are many puranas but some puranas have commentaries the bhagavat purana has many commentaries the vishnu purana has a few commentaries but other puranas don't have that many commentaries so it was jaydev goswami who wrote the geet govind there he talked about how krishna is mad in love for this special gopi and he tells that special gopi is radharani so in terms of today's world if you have a movie which is a blockbuster or best seller so jaydev goswami's book was like that it is a magnificent work of poetry itself and that highlighted radharani's special central position and that began a whole tradition from jaydev goswami's geet govind there are many other poets from chaitanya mahaprabhu would hear as is mentioned in the chaitanya charita amrut there was vidyapati there was chandidas and they all described radharani through poetry and they all describe the great devotion of radharani to krishna of the intimacy of the love between them and that is very important however the gaudiya tradition uh, this the gaudiya radha if you can see radharani as she revealed in gaudiya tradition is far far more than just the topmost devotee so now we won't get time to go there are verses from the chaitanya charita amrut which illustrate each of each of these points but let's look at them one by one so what does the gaudiya tradition say that she is not just the topmost devotee she is the topmost devotee whose love mystifies and intrigues even krishna so why does she love me so much what is there so lovable within me it's like if we are eating some food and somebody else is eating the food and this is so delicious this is the best food i have eaten in the world I and mean, then we eat it hey, it doesn't taste that good what do you find so special in it so krishna he doesn't understand what's so attractive about me that ugar radharani is able to give up everything completely so in fact it is this fascination with understanding radharani's love that krishna comes as lord chaitanya mahaprabhu so krishna is the attractor of devotion but radharani has so much devotion that even krishna cannot understand her so not only is he the topmost devotee but the topmost devotee whose love intrigues and mystifies even krishna that's the special point even within the understanding of her as the topmost devotee and it's not only that she is also the the ultimate embodiment and exemplar of devotion not only is a topmost devotee she embodies devotion so she is bhakta swar bhakta swar bhakti swarupini as jaitanya charitamrita says that she is the embodiment of devotion now what is what is the difference between the two she is the topmost devotee and she is the embodiment of devotion what it means is <clears throat> it's like um, say there's a uh, that there are many devotees and among devotees she is the topmost that's one understanding but the other is that she embodies devotion for everyone and that point can be better understood in the third point that anybody who has any devotion that devotion comes from radharani so 
she's not just one devotee among many devotees she's one devotee who is the source of the devotion of everyone she's one devotee who is the source of the devotion of everyone so whoever has devotion that comes from shrimati radharani <coughs> and then it is described that um, she is god in a female form she is not just again she is not just the source of she is not just the topmost devotee she is not just the exemplar of devotion she is not the sustainer of devotion but she is god in a female form and not only she is god in a female form she is also the embodiment of krishna's pleasure potency now what does this pleasure potency mean so let's look at some of these points one by one so so it is said that she is the ladini shakti so ladini karai krishna ananda aswadan ladini dwara bhakte kare bhakte ra poshan so if we sing the radhika ashtakam there it says so that krishna all his desires are satisfied by shrimati radharani so if all his desires are satisfied by shrimati radharani then why are there any other devotees at all why should any other devotee exist if all of krishna's desires are satisfied so the point is it's it's somewhat uh, that it's radharani directly and indirectly satisfies krishna's desires she pleases krishna so so she directly satisfies krishna's desires by offering her whole being to her her beauty her artistry her sweetness her all her entire being is for krishna's pleasure Mm-hmm. so she in in one sense is the person who gives the topmost pleasure to krishna but that's not all that she does along with that she whoever serves krishna whoever pleases krishna she nourishes their devotion she, it is she who gives them nourishment and devotion now what does this mean that say we talk about this you see if i explain this here yeah so whatever we uplifting we joy we experience in serving krishna sometimes we chant and we feel very good sometimes we sing and we feel good we feel uplifted so that joy is due to radharani's independent mercy independent means it is swarat just as krishna is swarat radharani is also swarat and that's why the joy is not accessible by mechanical repetition alone see one day i may i may wash my face wake up early in the morning and sit down to chant and i feel empowered by chanting and next day i think oh i'll do the same thing and i'll chant just as nicely and next day i chant and i just i feel as if the words are not coming out of my mouth I mean, uttering the word feels like a burden why because it is not mechanical repetition that produces produces that rasa that taste it is radharani's mercy that is producing that taste so it's it's she is the we could say the mystical mechanism now when we give the example we say that etha tarora mula nishechane na trupyanti tat skanda bhujo pashakha that water the root of the tree and all the parts will be watered hmm? parts of tree will be watered so now what we say that similarly we serve krishna and then we will be satisfied so now with respect to a tree we understand it the tree is here and the root is here the branches and the leaves and are here so from here <coughs> from here it will go there so in tree there is a physical mechanism but what is the mechanism in serving krishna so in serving krishna it's not a mechanism it's a person it's a person and that person is radharani so it is through radharani's mediation that we are able to please krishna and when we please krishna at that time uh, we feel nourished we feel enriched now does that mean that oh radharani is not pleased with us when we chant no it's not like that she wants us to realize that it is not we who are the doers we are tiny beings we are conditioned we are flawed what can we do to please krishna actually 
but she is the supreme being and it is by her by her mercy that we can ever do anything to please krishna so so it's not a mechanism now when we move forward let's i'll take about two three more points and then we will go to one past time which illustrates this principle mm. so she is i mentioned this four five points i'm going to two or three points she is god in female form mm. now nowadays in the western and westernized world feminism is becoming quite aggressive now feminism as far as saying give women equal rights to property and other things that's fine but here it becomes very aggressive and destructive so there are christian churches which which depict jesus in a female form they say why should god be male god should be female and now so they say this is a patriarchal male dominated kind of thing but the vedic tradition describes that god is not just male or female he is both but before we can understand how god is both male and female we need to understand that we are neither now how are we neither male or female because we are souls and soul doesn't have any material gender so as long as we are at our bodily conception then what happens is that we start thinking oh god god is of my gender or god is of some other gender no but what we consider my gender is actually not my gender because that's just the gen gender of my body and uh, the god is completely different he exists at a different scale but he is both male and female as i he is uh, it's it's god comes as the divine couple now why does he come as the divine couple we'll come to that but let's have some intellectual fun here that many in the western tradition they have this conception of monotheism and polytheism so bhakti is bhakti conception of divinity it's not just monotheism that only krishna is god it is by monotheism that there is one god but in two form there is a divine couple radha and krishna are both god and actually radha krishna are not the only divine couple there is sita ram lakshmi ramayana also so what you can say it is polymorphic by monotheism polymorphic means there are many many forms there are many many forms the divine couple manifests in many many forms so so it's the bhakti conception of divinity is that krishna is the su supreme lord but radharani is the supreme goddess now what does this mean the chaitanya charitamrit says that that radharani is the transformation of krishna's love she is the transformation of krishna's love can you see my screen here what are you seeing yes prabhu we see the bhakti conception of divinity are you see, seeing uh, my browser or only my uh, this thing yes we, we can see we can see, we can see everything and then the browser yes sorry we can see your your slide and the browser as well okay you're seeing the browser now mm. you're seeing the <laughs> words which i was quoting we are only seeing ppt mataji yeah we cannot see the browser probably yeah we cannot okay, see the browser sorry. okay so let me see if i can do that right sorry okay, so radhika hayena krishner pranay vikar swarup shakti ladini nam yahar so here this is adi lila 4.59 Radhika Hain, who is Radhika? Krishna ra pranaya vikar. Pranaya is love. Vikar is transformation. So Radha Rani is Krishna's love transformed, and she is the Swarupa Shakti. Swarupa Shakti, Ladini Nama Yahar, and she is his internal potency, and the internal potency's name is Radha Rani. Sorry, is is the little is not Radha Rani? It's Ladini Shakti. So Ladini is the pleasure giving potency, and the next verse is what I had quoted earlier, that we have the that Ladini does two things: she nourishes the devotees and she she pleases Krishna. But let's look at this point, pranaya vikar. So what does pranaya vikar mean over here? How is Radha Rani the transformation of Krishna's love? So the understanding is that Krishna. has a ocean of love within him so let's look at this see krishna transformation of krishna's love 
pranaya vikar so krishna has a ocean of love within him and that love is not satisfied unless it finds is uh, krishna's love wants to find a fulfilling object now he is perfect he is god and for him who is the perfect object for all perfect god there is no object as perfect as he himself so he transforms himself into the subject of love so chaitanya charitamrita says radha krishna ek atma dui deh dhari there one soul who take two bodies so ek atma dui deh dhari they take two bodies and what do they do ek atma dui deh dhari anyonya na vilasa kari they they delight in each other they delight in each other so what happens is krishna has so much love in his heart that it overflows and seeks a worthy object so the worthy object the worthiest object is he himself in female form and then they both of them reciprocate extraordinary levels of love and while they are reciprocating extraordinary levels of love what happens is all living beings so there's love going from krishna to radha love coming from radha to krishna and in their reciprocation all living beings we can say are meant to be in the ecstatic cross current of their love all living beings are flooded inundated nourished in the cross current of their love all living beings in the so radharani's love goes to krishna and krishna's love goes to radharani so let's try to understand how this happens with one past time all this might seem a little abstract and philosophical so in the anand vrindavan champu kavi karnapur describes the rasa leela and he describes very special insights from the rasa leela so one question we may get is we know that the gopis become proud and then krishna disappears from the gopis at that time when they become proud so now we may get the question at one level there is a lesson to learn that anybody even as exalted as the gopis if they become proud krishna will go away from them but another perspective comes up that actually how can how can devotees as exalted as the gopis become proud so kavi karnapur explains that when all the gopis are there be dancing with krishna in the ras leela they are all delighted to be with krishna and at the same time as they are with krishna they realize that actually our love for krishna is nowhere as much as radharani's love for krishna and if krishna is with all of us then the world will think that we are all at the same level so therefore they act as if they are proud so that krishna will go away alone with radharani so radharani so the gopis they all know radharani special position and they want to ensure that her special position is highlighted so they all act proud so that krishna will leave them and go with radharani and then when krishna and radharani are going to the forest radharani is initially delighted oh krishna is with me and the next moment her delight changes to concern and sorrow and agony she says lalita vishaka tunga vidya they are all so dear to me but they must be devastated that krishna has left them all and has gone away this how can i be happy alone when they all are in distress so what can i do so he starts thinking and then as krishna is taking her in one sense sneaking her away into the forest alone they are going quite quickly and radharani tries slows down and then krishna again tries to go fast again she slows down again she goes fast again she slows down and then finally radharani's hope is that if she goes slowly the gopis will be searching for them and the gopis will find them and they'll all be together so then radharani says that 
oh krishna i am i'm very tired i i can't walk any further so now radharani is again her her reason for saying this is that she wants other gopis to catch up with them and then krishna apparently gets angry he says because this is a forest i cannot get a palanquin to carry you so therefore you just climb on my back and i'll carry you but the way he speaks it is with anger and radharani is looking looking to see whether the gopis are coming or not and then suddenly she looks at krishna and she sees krishna's angry face and the next moment krishna disappears and then she realizes what has happened she says that actually krishna thought that she has also become proud that she has become proud she thinks is entitled and because of that krishna has gone away from her and then she becomes premon matta she becomes mad in love in, sep- in separation from krishna and then she acts as if krishna is there and she is speaking to krishna so it's like a imaginary conversation and in the first canto um, bhishma dev actually remembers how in on his death bed how the gopis were mad they acted as if mad in the absence of krishna so he's actually pointing towards radharani's madness also so she starts in krishna please don't go away the please don't go away he says i don't and then she imagines that krishna is she actually her imagination is transcendental and pure she imagines krishna is replying i don't like when anyone becomes proud and takes me for granted this <clears throat> no no i didn't take you for granted i was only concerned about other gopis other sakhi she says i came with you i had plans with you why did you thought my plans she says no i was just concerned about them she says no they will take care of themselves and you take care of yourself i am going and then radharani says no krishna i won't be able to live without you please come back and krishna replies that no all the other gopis are living you will also live i am going and then radharani says that no no krishna they at least have each other's association to support them i am completely alone here please don't leave me please come back and krishna says that you get what you deserve and he goes away from her and when he goes away from her radharani faints so actually radharani faints and now and now kavikarnapur gives a fascinating explanation here he says that actually he says murcha devi is in vrindavan everything is personified so murcha devi is the goddess who causes fainting so he says she comes to the rescue of radharani what happens is that our body now radharani's body is transcendental but at the same time it's a body so our body has finite capacity to withstand pain that's why when somebody gets a severe accident they fall un- they go unconscious or somebody hears some very distressing news and they may get they may just faint so that fainting is the body's defense mechanism by which when the pain is unbearable the switching off of the consciousness saves us from that unbearable pain so for radharani the pain of separation from krishna is unbearable and she wouldn't have survived without that without survived with that pain survived in the absence of krishna so to rescue her from that unbearable pain murcha devi comes the goddess of fainting comes and she envelops radharani and radharani that's how she faints and she faints and krishna has gone away and then at that time all the other gopis are searching and they are like transcendental detectives they see okay there's a foot there are two footprints over here and here there's one footprint here it seems that the gopi wanted some flower and the flower was high up so krishna rose her up picked, lift, lifted her up so that she could reach out to the flower so only and the one footprint is deeper and or one set of footprints is deeper and they keep moving for moving for when they're talking and some of the gopis especially the gopis in the side of chandravali they are a little annoyed that why has krishna gone away with this special gopi they look at each other and they immediately notice this radharani just they have gone away she's gone away with radharani so the chandravali herself is mild mannered but her associates get angry 
But as they are searching, searching, they finally come and then they see that Radharani has fainted. They see Radharani has fainted. They all run up to her. And some of the gopis, they just start shaking her. They start trying to arouse her. Some of them go to the nearby uh, stream and get some water and sprinkle it on her. And, and Radharani comes back to consciousness. They ask her, what happened? What happened? And at that time, Krishna, uh, Radharani tells the whole story. She's so aghast to see that Krishna is not there. She's in such agony that she can't even speak. But he starts speaking. And when all the other gopis, even the gopis on Chandravali's side who see that actually at that time, how much agony she is in. And they now, the gopis on Radharani's side, they know how much love Radharani has for Krishna. But the gopis on Chandravali's side, now they know Chandravali is their heroine. And she is the ultimate devo devotee for them. And they can't, you know, why, does, why is Radharani considered so glorious? But here, when they are interacting, and generally, you know, when we speak about someone, if we have any emotion for that person, if you are angry with that person, that anger comes out in the person, you know. Yeah, he's there. You can go and meet him. Just when we speak, the anger comes out. And if we have affection for that person, when we start speaking about them, our voice becomes soft, our eyes become bright, our whole expression becomes cheerier. So that is just when we have a little affection. Now, when Radharani, oh, she has the topmost love for Krishna. And when she starts speaking about her agony in separation from Krishna, she starts narrating all that had happened. And all the other gopis, especially when they, uh, they hear about how Radharani, even when she was with Krishna, she was concerned about the other gopis. All the negative feelings that they might have, they have had, they just completely go away. And they all become united. They all rally around Radharani. They say, how can we find Krishna? Now on one side, they're angry with Krishna for having abandoned them. But on the other side, they're afraid to uh, express their anger. Because they think if we express their anger and Krishna sees that, Krishna will further go away from us. So in that emotional turbulence, they search for Krishna everywhere. And Finally, they realize they go so deep into the Raja forest that when they look ahead, they can't even see their hand. And they realize if we can't see our hand, how are we going to find Krishna over here? So they turn back. And then they come. They come to the banks of Jamuna. Their minds, are minds and hearts are completely permeated with remembrances of Krishna. And then they sit down and compose the Gopi Gita. And it's in response to the Gopi Gita. It's one by one, all of them sing the Gopi Gita. Then finally, Krishna returns. So Krishna returns. And then they have very sweet exchanges. Now, that itself is a whole beautiful pastime, how Krishna responds to the Gopi's statements. But the point here is, why what we were discussing is, that we see Radharani's selfless love. That she is not concerned about simply enjoying with Krishna. Yes, she wants to give pleasure to Krishna, but she also wants, she has concern for other gopis. For other gopis. And she is even ready to give up the association, risk giving up the association of Krishna so that other gopis can get the association of Krishna. And this is the mood that Lord Chaitanya embodied. Lord Chaitanya, on one side, hungered for the association of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya, when as soon as he took sannyas, what he wanted to do was just go to Vrindavan and just be in the presence of Krishna. That's what his heart wanted to do. But this, that, so that is one part of Radharani, she just wants to be with Krishna. But another part of Radharani is she's concerned about all those who are not with Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also had that part, those who are not with Krishna. And therefore, what did he do? He, he performed that Leela by which he heard that Akashwani. This is not the time for you to go to Vrindavan. And then he came back. He came back to Shantipur. From there, he went to Puri. And from there, he traveled across South India and North India. And he delivered people. So, a devotee in the following in the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we also try to have that mood. One part of us is, that we want to be with Krishna and we long to be with Krishna. 
and that longing to be with Krishna will come by Radharani's mercy. But it's not just the longing to be with Krishna. It's also the longing that those who are not Krishna, not with Krishna, should also be with Krishna. Now, of course, in this case, it is different that Krishna had gone away from the gopis, whereas for all of us conditioned souls, we have gone away from Krishna. So, Prabhupada had that. The Prabhupada longed to be in Vrindavan, longed to be uh, with Krishna, but at the same time, he longed to take Krishna to the whole world. And Prabhupada was in America, the first Gaur Purnima that he celebrated. So all alone, nobody in America knew about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The first Janmash to be celebrated, barely a few people knew about Krishna. His heart, he, he writes in letter, I'm longing to be in Vrindavan and Mayapur, but my service requires me to be here. So Prabhupada embodies this mood. Now Prabhupada not only embodied the mood of Radharani in both longing for Krishna and longing for others to be with Krishna, but Prabhupada also was very, very careful in establishing the primary position of Srimati Radharani. That he, if you look at the Gaudiya tradition, if you look at Vishwanath Chakradakur or even Jeeva Goswami, they just refer to Radha as by the name Radha. They, they refer to her as simply as Radha. I have a friend in the Gaudiya tradition, in the, in the Sri Vaishnava tradition, he told me, you people, you get it all wrong. He says, <coughs> he told me that you have no honorific for Krishna. You just use Krishna. You don't say Bhagwan Krishna. You don't say Lord Krishna. You don't say Sri Krishna. And for Radha, you have a double honorific. You have Srimati and Radha Rani. So why do you respect Radha so much and don't respect Krishna? So actually, it is not like that. But it's Prabhupada's usage. So Prabhupada, has, Prabhupada introduces his double honorific for Radharani. Why is that? Because he wanted to highlight. Now it is not that Prabhupada, Prabhupada was not respectful to Krishna. He was definitely he had profound respect for Krishna. In fact, he coined a whole new term. The supreme personality of Godhead to explain the conception of Bhagavan. And Prabhupada was spreading Krishna consciousness. But Prabhupada wanted us to have a personal relationship with Krishna. A respectful relationship, but as a personal, accessible relationship, like a friend. Many devotees who were, were with Prabhupada, they said that when we were with Prabhupada and Prabhupada would speak about Krishna, like Prabhupada was speaking like a person who was his friend and he could be our friend. So Prabhupada told, for example, Hey Guru Prabhu, to st start running back to Godhead. So he said, Swamiji, I have never done anything with a magazine except read it till now. How can I run a magazine? So you just try, Krishna will help you. It's like Krishna is some person right next to there and he will help you. And the way Prabhupada spoke about it, actually devotees got that faith that Krishna is there and Krishna will help us. So it's not, Prabhupada did establish the position of Krishna. But Prabhupada wanted us to have an intimate relationship with Krishna, a personal relationship with Krishna. On the other hand, there were, uh, he uses a double honorific for Radha. Now, as I said, Chakravarti Path simply uses Radha. Even Jiva Goswami and uh, Rupa Goswami use Radha. Some of them use Sri Radha. Bhakti Sanskritakun uses Sri Radha, Srimati Radha, or Srimati Radhika. But it's Prabhupada who uses Srimati and Radha Rani. So Radharani is used, Radha, there are Vaishnava songs, Braja songs, Radharani ki jai, Balsane wali ki jai. But this combination, Srimati and Radharani, that is Prabhupada who uses this. So what has happened is, uh, there are, Prabhupada wanted to ensure that we don't misunderstand Radharani. The Sahajiyas take Radharani's love for Krishna and Krishna's love for Radharani very cheaply. And when mundane people write and speak about Radharani and Krishna, they think their love is mundane. They think it is to be immoral. So Prabhupada wanted us to have that understanding that Radharani is the topmost devotee. But at the same time, that she, she is not an ordinary person. She is a great person. So Prabhupada had Radha Krishna temples built all over the world. But at the same time, he had it. He ensured that we had the proper respect for Srimati Radharani. And Prabhupada revealed Radharani's position gradually. In the Bhagavad Gita, Radha, the word Radha comes only twice in the entire Bhagavad Gita. And where is that? It is Prabhupada in the 
introduction is offering prayers tapta kanchana gaurangi radhe vrindavaneshwari so in the verse and in the translation so just as the vedic scriptures keep radharani hidden prabhupada his books he progressively reveals on the altar radharani is there but it is his legacy by which we get connected with the broad gaudiya tradition we get the chetan charitamrita and we get the other books where radharani's special position is revealed and radharani's mercy is the most important for every devotee because it is by her mercy that we can gain the higher taste and that higher taste is what enables us to give up the lower taste and become liberated from material existence so we all can pray that that radharani who is the supreme devotee whose love intrigues krishna that radharani is the embodiment and exemplar of devotion that radharani is the source and sustainer of devotion that radharani who is god in the female form that radharani who is a transformation of krishna's love as his lavin shakti that radharani nourish our hearts with devotion so that we all can enter into that ecstatic cross current of love between radha and krishna that is the gaudiya vishnu gaudiya tradition understanding of the ultimate perfection for our sadhakas that god in male and female form are having ecstatic loving exchanges and we join in those ecstatic loving exchanges we become ecstatically immersed in the cross current of divine love that is the purpose and perfection of our lives the purpose and perfection that we all can attain by radharani's mercy thank you very much hare krishna so to quickly summarize i discussed three main points today how radharani is hidden in, radharani is hidden in scripture because she is even krishna is hidden because he is god at home and radharani is in parkiras so parkiras it means that actually uh, she is alt, supremely her love is supreme self she doesn't even get the name of krishna and yet she offers her everything to him and in today's if you consider how hidden she is in scripture and how widespread she is in today's temple and bhakti culture so how did that happen it is the gaudiya traditions uh, contribution so in our gaudiya tradition we discussed how she is revealed to be much much more than simply a special devotee she is she is a special i talked about this five things she is a special devotee whose love intrigues krishna she is the embodiment and exemplar her selflessness is such that every devotee aspires for that selflessness she is also the source and sustainer of devotion in everyone she is god in female form so krishna's love transformed and she is also the ladini shakti of krishna who gives pleasure to krishna and who sustains our devotion so thank you very much hare krishna any quick reflections or questions thank you so much for such amazing enlightening session for glorification of radharani radharani kurun devi ji do separation from krishna radharani loves so much krishna she gave everything to krishna and she is not accepting anything from krishna radharani is a source of every devotee thank you so much prabhu ji uh, i am requesting you to see if anybody have any questions or realization please go ahead Hare Krishna, Chaitanya Shraman Prabhu. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I just wanted to thank you for such a beautiful, beautiful class. I really, really appreciated all of it. I really loved um, how you explained that Radharani is the source of devotion for all devotees. I had never heard it um, put like that before. And that was really... just amazing it it gives me another way to kind of frame the way that i look at at shrimati radharani that's so so beautiful i also appreciate the way you explain the parikya das aras i'm sorry <laughs> um just cuz i i wasn't familiar with that at all and um and yes and just that all living beings are meant to be in the cross current of their love that was also just so you know nectarian to hear so thank you so much for giving us a deeper understanding and also even in even greater appreciation of shrila prabhupada and gaudiya vaishnavism for 
you know, making Radharani known to the world in a, in a much deeper way. So thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Happy to be of service. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So, are there any other? Thank you, Rita Mataji. Happy to be of service. Yes. If no Shall one has more further questions, we can end the call here. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Now I am unmute. Okay. So, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Beautiful, beautiful class, Prabhuji. And very nice conversation between Radharani and Krishna when they, you know, just go away from the Ras Leela dance and it's really, really amazing, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. So my question is, um, uh, somebody um, like uh, in our Bhakti Viksha, they said, uh, oh, we don't have uh, deities of Radharani. So, and we have Laddu Gopa. So, uh, can we dress up him as Radharani and worship? And it's like, you know, we say Radharani is uh, com um, coming from Krishna, is the like, you know, uh, uh, like uh, they are one, like that we say. And say, oh, anyway, they are one. So, we just dress up um, then like uh, Krishna um, as Radharani and worship. I'm not sure, Mataji. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, completely, you know, strange. I said, we, we said them no, but uh, I just want to clarify from you. It's a, you don't, I don't think there's any pastime where Krishna takes the form of Radharani. Does he? The, if there are any pastimes like that, it might be. When Davan Krishna takes on the many, he sometimes takes on the form of some gopi, acts like a gopi, or Radharani takes acts like a gopa. That she can go out. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the uh, I think the the tax collector they he, they they caught they caught him. All the gopis caught him, and they said, "You you need to um, dress up like a girl, and you know, you, you will be the, the elderly gopi." They say, "Oh, you marry my son, and you will be my daughter-in-law," and like that they <laughs> tease him. <laughs> That could be a precedent, but ideally, I would say that best is to ask some some pujari. Dina Bandhu Prabhu is coming here. You can ask Dina Bandhu Prabhu. Okay, okay. Yes. I I never expected this kind of question, yeah. but uh, we don't we don't do that actually. Actually, we don't do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Hi, Krishna Prabhu. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you so much for the class. This is Gail. Um, I, I wonder if you could um, make it a little more vivid for me, this concept of our being um, caught in the cross currents of the love between Radha and Krishna. You know, maybe what's a, what's a, a practical example of such an experience? of being caught in the cross currents of the love that they give to each other. Okay. So many devotees, like I'll give a contemporary example of getting caught in some divine cross currents, what it means. So I talked this with many senior Prabhupada disciples and they said that when Prabhupada was there and the Krishna conscious movement was just uh, spreading at uh, astonishing pace, so they said that now when we look back, when we speak now, when we try to do the same activities now, they just don't have the same, anywhere near the similar impact. So, I think, uh, so Satsuru Maharaj writes this and other devotees also, I heard this from them. They said that it was Prabhupada had such a great desire to glorify Krishna. Hmm? That Krishna's glory is be spread all over the world. And Krishna saw how much Prabhupada was risking and sacrificing even in his old age. So Prabhupada wanted to fulfill Krishna's desire. So Krishna, Prabhupada's desire was to glorify Krishna, spread Krishna's glory all over the world. And Prabhu, Krishna's desire was to fulfill Prabhupada's desire. And he said, we just happen to be the instruments in between. 
So Prabhu Krishna wanted to fulfill Prabhupada's desire, and we were we happened to be there to serve. And Krishna empowered us not because we were pure, but because we somehow were assisting Prabhupada. Now, this is not to minimize. We have had many many great souls in our movement in Prabhupada's uh, by Prabhupada's mercy in the next generations. But the point is, they felt that we were empowered like anything, and, uh, and we were not pure enough. We just because we, so in one sense. So what they are saying is something similar, that we were caught in the cross current of love between Prabhupada and Krishna. Prabhupada wanted to glorify Krishna, and Krishna wanted to fulfill Prabhupada's desires, and we became instruments. So Krishna used us to fulfill Prabhupada's desires, and Krishna, that means Krishna used us to spread His glories in ways we can't do now, or even if try to, it doesn't happen. So basically, what it means is that. From our perspective, that we have our spiritual guides, we have our spiritual masters, we have our, we have Shri Prabhupada through his books. So, you know, we take some instruction of Shri Prabhupada, which uh, which we feel Prabhupada is very strong, which which speaks strongly to us, and we do our best to fulfill that. And when we do our best, who knows? Krishna will empower us because. Krishna wants that desire of Shri Prabhupada to be fulfilled. I know one senior devotee who is in quite active in scientific, pre scientific preaching, a Prabhupada disciple. He is uh, he has he doesn't have an official science degree, but he has had an enormous impact in scientific outreach. So uh, I asked him, you know, how did you even decide to do scientific outreach? So he said, I read Prabhupada's books several times, heard Prabhupada's talks. And then I felt that one thing that Prabhupada strongly wanted, which was not happening, was that do scientific outreach. So I decided to take that up. So he said, my realization is Prabhupada's books, it's not just wisdom over there, but Prabhupada has given many, many of his aspirations, his desires there. And each of these desires, so Prabhupada's books are like a, like a mine with many, many jewels in the mine. Ratne Rakhani. And if we just take one instruction and we make that our life's mission, then, and we try to fulfill that in our own, according to our own small capacity, in our own, our own sphere of influence, we do that, then because that is Prabhupada's desire is to be fulfilled. So, um, Krishna enables, Krishna may engage us to be able to, to do that. So, that's how we can get caught in the cross current at our level. So it seems like basically whether we're talking about being caught in a cross cross current from our perspective here in this material world or in our um, perfected, I guess, Siddha Swarup in the spiritual world, the basic principle about being caught in a cross current means being instrumental in, in facilitating the, the expression of love between Krishna yeah. and his yes. devotee. And just a very quick um, clarification of definition of this word, um, transformation. Would you say that it's um, synonymous with manifestation? Because you're saying that Radharani's love is a transformation. You well, you could use manifestation, uh, and every manifestation also involves some transformation. So, like say, we say, Mm. Well, Radha and Krishna definitely have different forms. They don't have the same form. That is clear enough. So, in that sense, it's transformation it's, it might be a more appropriate word. But I think trans, but manifestation is also fine because manifestation can also involve transformations. Okay. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Leitangi Mataji, you had a question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, uh, please accept my humble obeisances and thank you so much for the wonderful, wonderful class, uh, so comprehensive as a presentation. So my question is, um, on uh, when Goswamis uh, installed the deities uh, of uh, Govind, uh, principal deities of Krishna, did they install Radharani also? I read somewhere or heard that uh, previously in Vrindavan, Radharani was worshipped as being in the heart of Krishna and then the Orison kings, they sent um, Radharani as uh, deities to be worshipped along. So 
can you throw some light on that print okay mm. so previously adharani was worshiped as being in the heart of krishna and not explicitly worshiped it's possible as i said two things are there in this that in general radharani's worship is hidden it is to some extent the gaudiya version of traditions revelation which is so we can say that it is krishna has arranged some uh, um so krishna has arranged it in such a way that he reveals different aspects of himself at different times so radharani's revelation is arranged through someone else mm, in this particular way so yes if you consider the goswamis they lived in vrindavan and while vrindavan was the abode of devotion but even in vrindavan if you see radha kund at that time was lost mm? and if you compare the his, if you uh, the history of that part of the world at that time vrindavan itself in some ways was lost mathura was the primary pilgrimage place and mathura was celebrated as the birthplace of uh, birthplace of krishna and the mathura brahmins were far more influential at that time and of course vrindavan was still a holy place no doubt govardhan and other places are there but vrindavan was not that prominent and that's why we have when who is that is it one of the associate of chaitanya mahaprabhu he wants to go to vrindavan and chaitanya mahaprabhu tells him be cautious don't the mathura mathura devotees they have their own special mood be careful in associating with them hmm? and then uh, then they said so the point is that it is because of the goswami's efforts they are building the temples they are discovering the holy places they are themselves staying in vrindavan that vrindavan started flourishing so now if you consider when people go people go to mathura to go to vrindavan they don't go to mathura primarily you know yes mathura is krishna janmasthan and it's special but vrindavan has far more temples so that transformation also due to the gaudiya vaishnava tradition so now in because mathura was prominent as the at that time so naturally radharani's worship is not talked about in mathura so much so to some extent we we have to understand that as, as gaudiya vaishnava tradition we were new and we had to establish our credentials just like prabhupad when he was in vrindavan and he wanted to do the temple inauguration he said the real in, in installation of the temple is our hari naam kirtan but because the brahmins will criticize so we have to get them and let them do all the rituals so there is when we are in a particular place there is a certain level of deference to local custom that is required so it is not that overnight the local customs can completely be overthrown so we could say from that perspective that is a more of a historical perspective that gradually the as the goswamis became more and more established their followers became more and more established then as the temples came then radharani radharani's uh, deity also came over there we see what chaitanya mahaprabhu taught it was implemented gradually chaitanya mahaprabhu said kiba vipra kiba nyasi shudra ke nay यही कृष्ण तत्व व्यक्ता से ही गुरु है हुएवर इज नोज कृष्ण तत्व दे कैन बी द गुरु बट द सेम टाइम रूप एंड सनातन गोस्वामी वेर द फोर मोस्ट डिसाइपल ऑफ लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु गोस्वामी बट दे देम सेल्स डिंट इनिशिएट एनी वन ना वी कैन से दैट जीव गोस्वामी वॉज इनिशिएटेड बाई रूप गोस्वामी बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट दे डिट टेक एनी डिसाइपल्स वाई बिकॉज इन दैट ऑर्थोडॉक्स सोसाइटी बिकॉज अर्लियर दे हैड they had embraced islam so they had been considered to have lost their caste so 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 they didn't give initiation then at that time most people would take initiation from jiv goswami or they take initiation from gopal bhatta goswami who was born in south indian brahmin family so gradually acceptance comes but just you go one two generations down narottam das thakur he was from a kayastha family and he he not only initiated but he started initiating brahmanas and so as our tradition gets more 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 influence more prominence then more and more of the tradition special revelations or special contributions become manifested overall chaitanya mahaprabhu's mood was more of reformation than revolution see revolution means hey this whole building is terrible just blow it up blow it down and let's build another building that's revolution reformation you know actually 
Now this particular wall, this doesn't look very good. Can we repaint this? This roofing is not good. Let's change this. You know, this flooring, we can change it. So gradually you change. So generally, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood was more of reformation. So the changes happened over generations. That's how Radharani's deity also didn't manifest immediately. It manifested gradually. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Pranam, Prabhu. Yeah, Prabhuji, thank you, Prabhu, for a nice class. Prabhuji, this one, you said uh, Radharani, Radharani's mercy is required to, to get love of Krishna. But uh, in like, how do we connect this one also when we say Balram's mercy also is needed to connect to Krishna, Prabhuji? Lord Balram's mercy also is needed. Okay. So now we say Balram's mercy is needed, then we say Radharani's mercy is needed. So the point is that in general, the bhakti tradition, bhakti tradition specifically, and the broad Vedic tradition, you know, it does not follow a practice of restrained glorification. What do you mean by restrained glorification? That means when one particular manifestation of the divine is glorified, that is glorified profusely. So, for example, if we go to Tirupati Balaji, we go to Jagannath Puri, we go to uh, we go to uh, Vrindavan, we go to Mayapur, even we go to Kashi. Each of these places have their Dham Mahatmya, and in the Dham Mahatmya, that place will be glorified as if it is the supreme holy place. And, and often the comparison will be made that this is the greatest and all others are of uh, all other because of various reasons all other places are they have become pale in influence or whatever. So the idea is that when we are accessing mercy from a particular manifestation of the Lord, let us access it completely. And that's why, oh, you know, Okay, I'm in Vrindavan, but this is Kali Yuga, and Mayapur is the special dham. So if only I had been Mayapur, that would have been better. No, you're in Vrindavan, take full benefit of Vrindavan. If, if we are in Puri and we think, actually, you know, Krishna never came to Puri actually. It's Krishna is Vrindavan, I should have been Vrindavan. No, don't do that. Whichever manifestation of the Lord uh, we are connecting with, be wholehearted in accessing that and relishing that. If you're chanting the holy names, at that time you start thinking, oh, I should be studying Bhagavatam or hearing Bhagavatam class. If I'm hearing Bhagavatam class, I start thinking, actually, the uh, Yoga Dharma is the Hare Nama Yoga Kevalam. Why am I wasting time now, hearing class? Instead of hearing a class for one hour, I can chant eight rounds more. No, don't. When we are accessing a particular manifestation of Krishna, wholeheartedly access that manifestation. So when we are talking about, Bal when we are, it's Balram's appearance day, at that time we will simply glorify Lord Balram. And how his mercy is indispensable. And when it's Radharani's appearance day, we will glorify Radharani. Her mercy is indispensable. And the point is that the Lord manifests himself in various ways. And whichever manifestation is accessible for us, just wholeheartedly avail of that manifestation. So that is the broad understanding. Now, you could have some more nuanced technical understanding, which I won't go into at this stage. But it, it you could be said that, uh, it's more of uh, it's uh, Balramji gives knowledge and Radharani gives pleasure. Hmm? It's Balramji is the guru who that, that aspect of Krishna who guides us to understand Krishna Tattva. And it is when by the mercy of Radharani we, we please Krishna and then Krishna uh, Krishna that our heart gets nourished. So that is a we could go into technical aspects of that because Radharani is, uh, in some ways, we have some bits, Sandini and Ladini Shaktis are there in the spiritual world. So Radharani manifests the Ladini Shakti. In some ways, it is said that Balramji manifests the Balramji manifests the Sambit Shakti in this world, especially. That it is Balram who manifests as the Guru. So you could go into those technicalities, but rather than going into too much into that, we understand that whichever manifestation is accessible to us wholeheartedly relish that manifestation 
and absorb yourself and absorb the asanas and you will get mercy by their back okay okay prabhu thank you thank you very much prabhu hari krishna prabhu so thank you very much shrimati radharani ki jai shrila prabhu pad ki jai shrila bhakta vrindavan ki jai 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 gauri prema nande